So when people call me a Nintendo YouTuber, I just have to laugh because, well, I'm not a Nintendo YouTuber. But if I was a Nintendo YouTuber, don't you think I would have played all the classic Nintendo-based games that we've gotten throughout history? Because the game we're talking about today, Super Mario RPG, never played it before. I didn't have a Super Nintendo growing up. I was a Sega Genesis kid. And when I eventually got into the Super Nintendo library as an adult, I of course played and beat games like A Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, Super Metroid, among others. But I never played Super Mario RPG and I don't really know why. Obviously, this was a groundbreaking RPG experience between Nintendo and Squaresoft at the time that really took Mario sort of out of his comfort zone. Up until that point, you had your 2D platformers, you had some educational games, but Mario never really got outside of that in order to really showcase a personality and give characters within the Super Mario universe a personality as well. So Super Mario RPG was, of course, announced as coming to the Nintendo Switch, and I was like, finally, now this is my opportunity to play it with all the new bells and whistles, so I went into this game completely blind. I didn't really know what to expect, and more importantly, if it would hold up as an RPG game. So these are my thoughts on Super Mario RPG. It's going to be an interesting sort of breakdown about how I feel about this game, but before we get into that, I want to give a huge thank you to today's video sponsor, Surfshark. The internet is full of creeps, weirdos, and people trying to steal your information. <laughs> I'm 8-Bit Eric and I'm stealing your data. So give yourself the perfect gift this Black Friday season with the peace of mind of Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN is an easy to use tool that can be used on multiple devices that will protect you online from hackers and would-be data thieves, but does so much more. Want to watch region locked content from YouTube or other platforms? Use your Surfshark VPN to be anywhere in the world at the click of a button, allowing you to access more content that you probably already pay for. Plus, Surfshark offers a bunch of key additions that you can add to your VPN, such as a powerful antivirus protection. Like I said, you can get an exclusive Surfshark Black Friday deal since I care about you by entering the promo code RGT to get an additional six months free at surfshark.deals RGT, link in the description box down below. And with a 30 day money back guarantee, there's absolutely no risk to you. So check out the link in the description box down below, use the coupon code RGT to get six free months and a huge thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. So Super Mario RPG is an RPG game, which means that there's a story. Now, of course, Mario RPGs have come along since then, and we've gotten sort of like the Mario and Luigi style of stuff. We've gotten the more turn-based sort of strategic style stuff with Mario and Rabbids, but this was kind of the game that kicked it all off. And upon first inspection, it seems like a typical Princess Peach is kidnapped by Bowser situation, but you quickly learn there's a whole lot more to the game than that. Essentially, there's a new enemy called Smithy. He's destroyed the Star Road with a hammer, and you have to pick up the various Star Shards in order to finally get to Smithy and beat him, thus restoring order into the Super Mario universe that this is taking place in. The story itself is fine. I actually kind of like the way everything is distributed. You learn about new characters who are, of course, now, you know, fan favorites, characters like Gino and stuff like that, who was first introduced into this game. So I had, like no idea who this dude was or how he came to be so learning kind of about Gino I thought was a very interesting thing for me because of course you know he's a popular sort of thing oh Gino for smash Gino for smash but now I know why people like this character I'll say the writing of the game is pretty well done I know some people when talking about this game didn't really care for the jokes but most of them you know they kind of hit with me like I chuckled at a few things within the game I thought it doesn't take itself too seriously which is good for this style of RPG so overall I, I enjoyed the story it wasn't like super in-depth crazy or anything like that but there were some interesting plot twists along the way the characters that you meet really are able to show personality which at that time time was really the first time a lot of these Mario based characters had that sort of opportunity now gameplay wise it is a turn-based RPG but there are some different elements to the game that kind of keep things fresh throughout now like we saw in later entries into Mario RPG games it sort of has a bit of a real-time battle system in which when you attack if you press the attack button at a specific time you can actually do more damage with your basic attack this also works with special abilities this also works with the defense as well like I said a, a staple for a lot of these Mario RPG 
RPGs, especially if you played like the Mario and Luigi stuff, but to see sort of where it got its groundwork, I thought was pretty cool with this game. Now there's a bunch of different special attacks that you can do. You unlock special attacks as you level up throughout the game. All your characters have various special attacks as well. You have your basic item system where you have things that will replenish your HP, replenish your magic or flower points within the game. So it's all pretty traditional in that sort of sense, but there are some caveats and differentiating things that happen within the gameplay itself to keep things interesting throughout. You actually build up a gauge meter that whenever you do like a perfect attack with the timing or do a perfect defensive mechanic with the timing, you actually build up this gauge and when this gauge gets to 100, Toad pops out and he allows you to get a special item in order to use within that battle. It's pretty fun. It keeps things interesting throughout and eventually once you get three people into your party, you could do like a special huge triple attack that just does like huge major damage and stuff like that. So overall, you know, I liked the, the gameplay loop. You know, there is some basic platforming that you do when you're exploring the different areas and that kind of translates into the structure of the game itself because the structure of the game it's not like a super open world sort of thing you have an overview map where you go to specific areas within the map and then you kind of explore these areas as far as you know if they're a town or something like that you walk around the town you talk to different towns folk you, you buy your items you take a night at the inn you look for hidden items and stuff like that it's simple but I appreciated it because some RPGs just go for like the standard sort of when you go into a town you don't really explore it it's just a series of menus telling you like what is within this town so I like being able to explore things within this so I thought that was pretty cool of course there are deviations that you end up coming across as well there's like a waterfall thing where you got to collect coins there's also a um a weird music sort of thing where you got to know the notes do re mi fa so la ti do you know it, it's kind of different but like once again it sort of breaks up the monotony of the standard gameplay loop which is enjoyable but it's something Thing that you know adds a little bit of pizzazz to the game now as far as the game's difficulty and length are concerned it's definitely a bit of an easier experience and definitely a bit more streamlined although you can explore these areas really you're just trying to get to the next point in order to unlock the next area on the map and then go in there and explore that area i never found myself having to like grind because i felt under leveled or anything like that i didn't necessarily go out of my way to get in enemy battles i just kind of took on enemy battles as i saw fit and i never really felt like i was at a super disadvantage which this game is kind of known for being a bit on the easy side, so I was kind of expecting that to some degree, but it's definitely a more streamlined experience. It's obviously not the longest game in the world. You could beat it in like two days if you play a good chunk of it and you get through some of the stuff and don't get stuck on anything, which there's really not a whole lot to get stuck on unless... I don't know you just have a couple bad battles or something like that but the game saves constantly and there's save points all over the place there's two different difficulties as well i played it on the normal difficulty there's actually an easier difficulty so if for some reason you're struggling there is that option presentation wise though this is where the game really shines for me because this game looks absolutely gorgeous i love the visual style that they use with this game like it looks like a, a a more sort of rich mario platformer game like everything just has its own sort of feel to it all the environments look really well done and very well detailed all the character animations are very well done you come across some different enemy types and stuff like that e everything just looks great like it looks great i play this a lot in oled mode on well on handheld mode on the oled screen and it really really pops even comparing it to the playstation portal screen like I, I thought this looked absolutely fantastic on that oled screen and the music is really done in a very well done style as well it has that classic geno song but it's like remix music and stuff like that this the the music is definitely very captivating for the set pieces that you come across and i think the presentation in this game is just absolutely top notch so what are kind of the drawbacks about the game 
I guess, you know, if you've played this game before, there's not a whole lot of new stuff to see. Like, it's pretty much a, a, a faithful replication of the original game with a few different tweaks into it. And I believe somebody said that there's like an additional boss battle. I don't really know if that's the case because I don't really have anything to compare it to since I never played the original game. But it seems like there's not a whole lot of discovery for people that are, you know, diehards of this or have played this game recently or something like that. So that kind of holds it back for some people obviously it's a bit on the easy side it's not the most challenging game in the world and it's not the longest game in the world but i wanted to share this thought with you towards the end of the video because i feel like a vast majority of people have already you know they got my opinions on the game they've probably already clicked off but i'm gonna make a bold claim here as someone who went in blind to super mario rpg if you had to ask me which game i preferred more super mario rpg or super mario brothers wonder I think I would pick Super Mario RPG. Now, obviously, that's because I'm RPG 85, the king of RPGs. But on a serious note, I don't know. I think this game is just like super charming and it, it feels kind of like a Mario game because of the, the pseudo platforming segments that you come along. But it just has like so much more personality, you know, so much more of a story, so much more of character personality that you don't get in a lot of 2D platforming games. I think Super Mario Brothers Wonder is great. Don't get me wrong. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with that game, but I feel like I'm enjoying my time a bit more with Super Mario RPG than I did with Super Mario Brothers Wonder. And that's just a me thing probably. But as someone who's never played this game, it's like, damn, this game really holds up well. This is a, a fan. If you've never played this game before, definitely buy it. I definitely buy it. It, it. it is fantastic. It's one of the best Nintendo Switch games of the year. And one of my more positive experiences that I've had this year with a new game. Now, if you have played this game to death and you're, you're well familiar with it, you might want to skip out on it or wait for a price drop or something. Or if you just want to revisit the game for old time's sake, this is a great way to do it. But for me, this was a top notch experience, dude. Like them, the Metacritic scores, you know how I feel about Metacritic, but I don't know. They're looking a little bit sus because I, I, I don't know. Like I would, I would say this game is, is a little bit higher than an 83, but Hey, you know, it's just all people's opinions at the end of the day. And in my opinion, this is a great game. So let me know in the comment section down below. How are we feeling about Super Mario RPG for the Nintendo Switch. Are you a first time player? Are you thinking about picking it up? Or have you already picked it up, beaten it twice? And thanks for watching the video, I guess. Because, I mean, you didn't really have to do that. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share the video around. A huge thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. Seriously, guys, protect yourself out there. You don't want 8-Bit Eric hacking into your account and getting your information and looking at the weird stuff you look at online. Link in the description box down below. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.